many years ago. In fact, I preached the message probably twice. Amen. I'm not preaching that message, but here in chapter number one, I probably have somewhere along the line preached this, uh, not this message, but from this text. But because it is a good text, and in and, First and Chronicles 4, and we're going to be looking at verse number, really I'm going to look at verse number 9 and verse number 10. Uh, as we look at that, we find the prayer of Jabez. Several years ago, uh, I think the man's name, last name was Wilkinson or Wilkerson, uh, wrote a book on the prayer of Jabez. I don't know that the, 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 the drive for the church embracing that, I don't know if, if all of it was completely understood, but I believe that there is truth in things that he said. I'm not bringing any of that. I did not even, I read his book many years ago, uh, and I can't remember what I did yesterday, so don't expect me to remember the details of that book. However, I, I did think it was, it, it, it was worthy of time reading. But I want to look at it afresh and anew. I want to look at Jabez, and I want to look at this. I want to look at praying, praying with wisdom. How do we pray? I want to pray with wisdom. Saul did not have that, that understanding, Brother Doug, to be able to pray with wisdom. Uh, he did not have that, uh, that experience, Sister Nancy, to, to pray with wisdom, so he looked for an alternative. Listen, if we do not spend our time in prayer and we do not seek God, no, I'm grateful for what God has blessed me with, Brother Dennis, in a place of prayer. I know that my wife is an answer to prayer. I know that those two precious little girls are an answer directly to prayer. I know that. I know that. Those were the methods by which we sought God. Amen. And I know that even me pastoring this church is an answer to prayer. God, God, God heard my prayer and directed me. And, and you have experiences in your life as well. But I want to continue those experiences. They don't just stop in yesterday. But they continue on today. Let's, let's read. The Bible says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the, uh, on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that your hand might be with me, and that you might keep me from evil that it might not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. When we read down through here, if you look at the beginning of this chapter, maybe even the title of your chapter will tell you that it is talking about the descendants of Judah. I love uh, that first verse there, wonderful verse. I've preached from that, as I said before. But as you so grow, go on down through here, you continue to wade through a lot of names. In fact, if you're like me, oftentimes it's easy to kind of breeze over these and not really find a lot of meat in these names. However, I do believe that when we grab hold of it and study it with a concordance or a commentary, I believe that there's a lot more information than what the eye naturally meets when we begin to read. And as we're reading down through Judah and his descendants, what does Judah's name mean? Praise. Praise or worship. Amen. So here is this, this, this man of the tribe uh, of Judah, uh, 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 the descendants uh, uh, of the 12 tribes, and uh, he, is, he is sharing, uh, is being shared of his descendants, and we find that there's a man named Jabez in the middle of all this. Now, the Spirit of God certainly did anoint the writer of 1 Chronicles to, to notate about Jabez and give us some more information about Jabez than what other people uh, are, are given uh, here in this genealogy. And so, in, in, in making this statement, the, the, the Bible tells us that uh, he was more honorable than his brother. Now, when we look back in the Hebrew culture, typically what happened is that we unfortunately didn't get a part in the naming of the children, but most often the mother named her child. And uh, the child was named because of, of various things that was happening around the mother. And, uh, and, and her, uh, Jabez's mother, she gave him a 
name, and particularly boys' names in general, meant something. And uh, his name, really when you begin to look at his name, it, it means that uh, he makes sorrow. So something was happening in the life of Jabez's mother, or in the birth of, of Jabez, where he is making sorrow. Amen. Uh, and so she felt that she was going to name him this. Maybe she felt that this boy is coming, and I really don't have the means to properly care for him. He makes sorrow for me. Or whatever the events was surrounding this, that his name makes sorrow is what one meant Jabez. He makes sorrow. How would you like to be pegged with that name for the rest of your life? That you make sorrow. I mean, you can make fun of a lot of names. Sometimes I hear folks' names and I think, why would your parent ever label you with that? You know, shame on them, right? Uh, but how would you like to be named Jabez and then have the stigmatism with it that you make sorrow? Wow, that's terrible. That's terrible, really. And that culture is named it that he makes sorrow. Why well, I look at Jabez and I see something that's very honorable about him, and the Word of God says that he was more honorable than his brethren, then no matter what his name was or the stigma that was behind his name, that he allowed God to take his circumstances and change it around and make him something great. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go bawling my whole life long and carrying a clean neck and dragging my head and blaming my mom for the terribleness of my life and, and my name and I'll go through years and years of counseling and I'll have a broken marriage and I'll have a dysfunctional family. I'll never be able to hold a job and I'll be addicted to all kinds of things just because of my situation. Mm -hmm. He allowed God to change it. It was broke. He was more honorable, the Bible says, than his brothers. Uh, he, he allowed the Lord that even in the most difficult times, even in the severity of sorrow, that God can turn it around and make it a blessing. Mm -hmm. So whatever your situation is, whatever my situation is, God can turn those things around that seem like they're sorrowful and He can make a blessing out of them. And that's exactly what Jabez had happened in his life. It was bad. It was sad. It was terrible. It was a stigmatism. But God turned him around. Because Jabez allowed God to turn him around. Who knows what God will do when he gets in the middle of it? He'll turn this thing around. He'll turn it upside down. He'll change your sorrow and joy. He'll turn you from feeling like you're on the bottom to making you feel like you're soaring on top. Amen. When we get hold of God, He can change our situations. And I believe that Jabez, oh God, he was very much of a mindset that I'm going to have God change my situation. Why do I say this? Amen. Because when we begin to look at Jabez, and I want to look at this. Verse number 10, the Bible says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, say, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. If you will allow, and I won't be lengthy on any of these, but if you will allow me to break this next verse down into seven different parts, I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to look at some wisdom that we can gain from prayer. The first being the practice of prayer. Amen. The Bible says that Jabez called on the Lord God of Israel. The very first thing that I notice about him is, is that the wisdom that he shows us in prayer, this man of sorrow changing his situation into being a blessing, the very first thing about him is that he was a man of prayer. Listen, until we want our world to be changed, amen, we'll find ourselves in a place of prayer. Even if situations don't change, the Lord can change us internally and make us a blessing in the middle of a situation. So he was a man of prayer. The practice.
practice of prayer, even though there was idol worship and there was stray things going on round about him, he knew who his God was and he knew that he had the ability and the power to see things change mm -hmm. when he talked to her. The Word of God says that there is one mediator between the God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. Amen. We have the ability to pray. I love what Matthew 7 says. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto mm -hmm. you. I love what uh, Mark chapter number 11, verse number 24 says. The Bible says, Therefore I say unto you, Whatsoever things you desire. Let me just stop here and say this. When you are seeking the will of God, your mm -hmm. desires will be correct. Mm -hmm. When you're seeking your own self-motivated things, amen, you're really not launching into a place of prayer where God wants you to launch. He says, therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever things you desire, so when you pray. Uh, go on down uh, to the latter part uh, of this chapter, the next couple of verses. The Bible says that you have to learn to forgive others. And God will forgive you. Amen. And you can't have odd against anybody. So you have to come with a clean heart and a right disposition before God. And whatsoever things you desire, as you're seeking the will of God, he says, why don't you ask them and believe? Mm -hmm. Faith. That's what believing is. Faith. <laughs> that you receive them and ye shall have them. So here was Jabez. He was a man who practiced prayer. Amen. When he went to God in prayer, he believed. Amen. Thank God. I believe God can do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm thankful for folks. Amen. Who carry me in prayer. That when my faith does waver, they have faith to believe. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we have to grab hold of it ourselves. Amen. Sometimes we have to grab hold of it for others and have faith and believe. Mm -hmm. So here's Jabez. The practice of prayer. And then the purpose of prayer. He says, uh, Jabez called on the God of Israel, the purpose of prayer, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed. Now, I feel safe in saying this to you folks tonight because you understand, amen, what I'm about to say is that if we want to be blessed in our life, it comes from a place of prayer. Mm hmm. We're throwing the prosperity doctrine out the door. Amen. But one thing that I will say that every one of us in here is blessed. Remember that chorus we used to sing? I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning or I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. You know how blessings come? Is when we find out that the purpose for prayer is that God will bless us when we pray. Amen. Amen. God wants to hear from us. God wants our petitions. God wants the desires of our heart. God wants us to long after Him. And as we pray, we will be blessed. Amen. Even if God doesn't answer the way that we expect it to be, if we're open to Him answering it, we'll walk away blessed. It's a win-win situation. So the purpose of prayer is that we will be blessed. Amen. I want to say this to you tonight. If you're short on blessings, it's no one's fault but your own. Pray. Mm -hmm. The purpose of prayer is we'll be blessed. We'll be blessed. In a place of prayer, the presence of God, the power of God, and the provisions of God. We will be blessed. The practice of prayer and the purpose of prayer. The next part of his prayer is this. It's the perimeter of his prayer. He said, enlarge my coast or my border. Now, I know that some folks would say, and this is where people get mixed up. You really want to study and you really want to understand what he was saying. Is that he wanted to conquer more land for God. Mm -hmm. Give me more land that it can be victorious for the kingdom of God and the building of God's kingdom. If I were to put this in vernacular of what we should say when we pray, we would say, enlarge my vision. 
Where there is no vision, the people will perish. Listen, I love each of you, but my vision is for more folks to come in and be part of us. God, enlarge us. Spread out our parameters. God, give us a, 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 a bigger, bigger fingerprint in the Upper Dolphin area. Give us a bigger fingerprint in Pennsylvania, even in the United States of America. God, let the fingerprint go larger. God, uh, enlarge our borders. Give us a vision for doing something for you. Listen, you want your family to be saved? Amen. You have to have the vision for them to be saved. Amen. Sometimes maybe we just need to thank God. God, thank you for the Holy Ghost dealing with it. Thank you that you're going to save them. Amen. The vision that's going to work. Amen. Sometimes we have to thank God for our healing even when we still feel the pain. Amen. Thank you for Enlarge my vision. God, you're big enough. <coughs> so it, it was enlarge my coast. I believe that if we want to remain small spiritually, put that whatever avenue of your life you want, if you want to remain small spiritually, then don't ask God to increase your vision of order. But oh, if we could be like Jabez. God, I want a bigger area. I want to affect more people for you. Give me a greater platform. Give me a greater area, God. Grow it. <clears throat> so the practice of prayer. Jabez calls upon the Lord of Israel. The purpose of prayer, oh, that thou wouldest bless me in thee. The perimeter of prayer, enlarge my coast. The fourth thing is, is the presence from prayer. He prays this. He says that thy hand might be with me. I read this a couple of weeks ago, but I, I was drawn back to it. In Exodus chapter number 33, verse number 15, where Moses, the Bible says, And he said unto him, or the Lord, If your presence goes not with me, carry us not up from hence. Amen. The whole purpose of prayer, amen, is that the presence of God may be with us. You know, when the Word of God reminds us to pray always, amen, to cease not and pray, it reminds us that God is with us. No matter where we're at or what we're doing, amen, the presence of God is with us. He can be with us in the sanctuary. He can be with us in our homes, our places of employment. He can be with us in the hospital. He can be with us if we're not even around another Christian. Amen, the presence of God because we are practicing prayer and God's presence is where prayer is being practiced. Oh, God, help us. God is not allowed. I was thinking about this tonight. God is not allowed in so many places. When I was in fourth grade, I, I, I seen that my fourth grade teacher, she was old when I was in fourth grade. She, you know, she's really old now. Fourth grade is a long time ago. She's up in her 90s, living in Florida. And she used to play the piano and sing. And I got the kick the first time I heard her sing because she was a soprano. And she just bellowed it out loud on her piano in her classroom. And we would sing songs. We started out at school. You know, it was fire awareness, fire prevention. We learned about Smokey the Bear. And we sang Junior Fire Marshals Our Weight. Amen. I don't know if any of you heard that before. Uh, but, but we would sing that. And when we would get done singing that, Brother Dennis, we would all stand by our desk. And we would recite the Lord's Prayer together. I'm talking about public school. Oh, Mrs. Sires, I don't think she'd be able to do that nowadays in public school because God's not allowed there. God's not allowed in a lot of places in our communities. But if we practice prayer, God will always be allowed where we are. Hallelujah. Jabez, keep on praying. And then the fifth thing is the purity from prayer. That thou wouldest keep me from evil. I believe that seldom do people pray this, but Jabez just wanted to be holy. He just wanted to be holy. He just wanted to be holy. 
No matter how anybody responded to him or treated him, he just wanted to be holy. No matter what anyone else was talking about or what was going on in his community, he just wanted to be holy. He said, oh God, the cowards keep me from evil. Amen. Praying people are more upright than non-praying people. Look at your own life when you're going through those times where you're not praying the way that you should. You'll find that you're more apt, amen, to let in the things that are not godly. But when we are on our guard and we are praying, amen, we find that our lives, amen, are lived in purity. God, help us to pray that we may live purely. Mm -hmm. God is holy. And he wants us to be whole. The sixth thing is this is the pleasure that comes from prayer. He says that it might not grieve me. We all know that there's pleasure in sin, but it's short-lived for a season. But there's something that is long-lasting in prayer, Amen. and that is pleasure. You ever just spend a good time in prayer with God? You get up, it hasn't been a pleasure to be able to be in the presence of God. <laughs> to be able to talk to God and have Him talk to the depth of your soul. Amen. Talk about joy unspeakable. The Word of God affirms to us that in His presence there's joy. Amen. That His visitation preserves us. We know all those things. And so as we pray, Sister Stacy, what a pleasure for each of us to be able to say that I'm not grieved. But it's been a pleasure to have been in the presence of God. Yep. And then the, sixth, or the seventh thing is the provisions from prayer. And God granted him that which he had requested. What did James tell us? We have not because we ask him. I can't believe God hasn't blessed me. I can't believe God hasn't provided. May I ask you something? Have you prayed about it? Or do we just expect because we are labeled a Christian that that's our entitlement? God wants to hear from us. Maybe the reason why we haven't experienced the problem is because we haven't asked. Jabez, how can you be so happy but Justin and not grieve when your name means he brings sorrow? You know why? Because Jabez asked God to take that stigmatism away and give him joy and not grief. And Sister Tina, God answered his prayer. I'm not minimizing or criticizing us tonight. I'm just saying I can be guilty as well. Sometimes we think, God, why, how much time have we really spent asking God about it? Because God does answer prayer. Difficult prayers. Things that should have long-lasting effects. God removes. Jabez should have had a long-lasting effect that he brings sorrow. Mm -hmm. But God said, no. He asked of me. And I'm taking that effect. All right. Sister Holly, I know you're crazy with the girls. You're not playing tonight? You want to come grab something for it? Mm -hmm. Tonight, let's pray. There are many needs. There are needs represented that I've heard verbally tonight as you've given them a prayer request. But I know that there are needs that you have. One thing about Jabez is he practiced prayer. Mm -hmm. He knew the purpose in prayer was that God would bless him. I believe tonight you can walk out of here blessed because God's answered your prayer. Mm -hmm. The purpose of prayer was the blessing, the perimeter of God, give me a greater vision. You can leave here tonight with a greater vision. The presence of God from prayer, amen, God visits with you. The pleasure of prayer that he grieves us not and the provision that God answers. Amen. Tonight as believers, I believe that we know how to praise. 
I believe we do very well in this church. And you worship good tonight. I've seen that. You are worshiping God. Judy, you've done well. Look down through your genealogy. There can be some softer things. Let God change it. And would you allow your name to be known as a name that's more honorable than others because you take your burdens to God in prayer and you see an answer. Tonight, let's go to bed. Father, let's pray. Amen. Let's go to bed.